Ego is when you try to make it better than it is, and you know the truth is it's not. But when you really are in a position, love, when you're in a position where you own what you're about, and you know what you're here to deliver, and you deliver it on a significant scale, then you have an opportunity to really experience not only success, but fulfillment. And this conference has gotten bigger and bigger, not only in its size, but also in its impact. And so I'm really feeling privileged to be back with you here. And I know you're raising, working to raise a million meals. And uh, I'm very, very into hunger, to say the least, primarily because I was so hungry at that stage of my life. And my life was completely changed because when I was 11 years old, we had no money and no food. And we got used to that, but it was Thanksgiving, which makes it more emotional. And my parents were saying and doing things that after you say them, you can never take them back. And it was very profoundly painful, obviously, for myself as the oldest and try to keep my brothers and sisters from hearing it. But it profoundly changed me because that day something changed my life and it was somebody simply coming and delivering food. And it wasn't the person who wasn't giving it, it was a delivery guy. And it wasn't a happy moment for my father. It was interesting. Um, I, you know, my yell, bad mom and dad are yelling at each other, my mom's saying things to my father, you haven't taken care of us. Pretty painful moment. And the door happens and I go open the door and there's this tall guy standing there with these big bags of food and on the ground beside him we had this pan of uncooked turkey. And he said, is your father here? And I said, just one moment. And I sprinted to get my dad thinking this was going to be the most euphoric moment you could possibly imagine. But God had come by and surprised us. Somebody cared about us, whatever you want to frame it. And my father came to the front door begrudgingly. And when he saw the man, he got very angry. And he said, you know, we don't take charity. And he went to slam the door. And the man was a very tall guy. And he put his arm or shoulder against him and kind of bounced off of him. And he said, sir, this is not charity. Everybody has tough times. And somebody knows you're in need, and they want you to have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Please accept this gift. My father got even more intense and started saying, I don't accept charity. And this time the man put his foot there and bounced off of it. And then he said to my father, and I thought my father would hit him. He looked at my father and said, he looked at me in the background and said, don't let your family suffer because of your ego. It was intense words to say. My father didn't know what to do. He grabbed the food, he slammed it down and slammed the door. And I tell you the story because everything in our life is controlled by three decisions. And those three decisions I'd like you to look at today because I really want to deliver for you. I didn't come here to do a speech. I love Mark dearly. I really want to serve you and you all giving the greatest gift you have, your time. You can get your money back, but you can't get your time back. And so I really want to serve you. And I think one of the most powerful things we can serve you is have you become clear of what the controlling force is that's controlling the quality of your life. And you and I both know it's not the amount of money in your pocket. It's not who you know. It's not even what you've been through. It's really the decisions you make moment to moment about a couple of different things. And the three decisions I made in that moment that I'd like to pull your attention to just real quick are, in this moment you're making these three decisions, by the way. The first one is, what are you gonna focus on? And that day, my father focused clearly on the fact that he had not taken care of his family. And whatever you focus on, you're gonna feel. In fact, many of us in this room, who's ever focused on something? You were thinking something horrible was gonna happen. You experienced the pain of that failure, that challenge in your life, and then it never, ever happened. Who's had this experience? Say, ah. And if things aren't bad in your life, you can always think of shit that hasn't even happened yet and feel bad in advance, but many people do. Because whatever you focus on, you'll feel. Write it down. Focus equals feeling, because if you start to take control of your focus, you take control of your life. But that day, he focused on the fact that clearly, he failed his family, and that was the meaning. The second decision you make is, what does it mean? As soon as you look at something, think about something, focus on it, you decide, what does this mean? Is this the beginning or the end? Is this punishment or reward? Is God trying to hurt me or trying to challenge me? Or is this nothing to do with God? I was just being a lazy bastard. Like, the meanings we give to things control our life. If you think it's the end of a relationship, are you going to behave the same way as you think it's the beginning of a relationship? In the beginning of a relationship, when you're totally in love with someone, what would you do for them? Tell me, what would you do? Oh, come on, guys. What would you do when you're totally in love? Shout out. What would you do? Make the sound of what it's like when you're totally in love out of your mind. Just go ahead and make that sound like a primal sound of what that feel like. Just go for it so we get some energy in this room. It's been a long time for some of you, I can see really clearly. Let's try this time. How about totally in love and passionately desiring this person? Like you can't wait to touch them, make love to them, be with them. Make the sound of what that would be like. Go ahead, nice and loud. Go ahead. So when you have the meaning that this is the beginning of the relationship and this person's the most incredible thing and you will do what for them? What will you do? Anything. What if you were that way with your client? What if you are that way with your internal customers, because your partners, you go, well, we would have real sexual problems with HR, that would be the real challenge. But if your commitment was the same, when you're in that place, you do anything in the beginning of a relationship. <laughs>
For example, all hell could be breaking loose around you, and you could just be sitting in a chair in this centered space, all hell breaking loose, and you could still feel great. Is that possible? Yes or no? Sure, but you and I live in a Western culture. Where if you sit and bliss out, people come and take your furniture. So we have to be good at not only controlling the internal world, but our external world. And that's shaped by what we do. And what people do is based on their emotions and also their real hearts. So I thank you, Mark. <laughs> That success does not mean 